Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a very highly requested video and obviously you've read the title. This is a video for all my favourite makeup brushes. Now I have over the years obviously my collection has grown, my makeup has changed, my tastes have changed and even the products that I use in terms of like accessories and tools to apply my makeup has also changed over the years and these are the things that of mine that are tried and tested that I use on an almost daily basis that I wanted to finally share with you guys so what I'm going to do is because I've got quite a lot of brushes to get through I'm going to break them down bit by bit so the first thing I'm going to show you are my favorite uh foundation brushes so the first one is this one here and this is the Morphe M439 buffing brush. This one is amazing to use for cream foundations. I love it to use my Hourglass uh, Vanishing Seamless Finish Foundation Stick, my Makeup Forever uh, Ultra HD Foundation Stick, my Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation, even cream foundations um, as in liquid foundations as well. This is amazing to use. It really buffs everything in and leaves a really nice flawless finish. I probably will end up getting another one of these. That's how much I love it. And another two are these two from Real Techniques. Real Techniques foundation brushes in general are absolutely amazing. This one is the Expert Face Brush and this one is the Buffing Brush. I think the Buffing Brush actually comes as part of a set I think it's the core collection um but I really love this one especially for liquid foundations because even though it's a dense brush you can see it's still quite fluffy so you can really move the liquid around quite a lot something like this would not work well on cream um creamy thicker or stick foundations this one as well is very similar it's almost like a mix between the morphe one that i just showed you and this one so this one works really well across the board on all foundations i find so it works really well on thicker ones cream ones stick ones that sort of thing all of these give a really nice flawless finish now i used to have the stippling brush by real techniques as well but one fell apart and the other one is on its way to falling apart which is quite a shame because generally i find real techniques brushes to be really good quality but unfortunately those two which you that one used to be one of my favorites has not made it into this video for that reason so i really really love these two now sticking with the uh face brushes this one here is the sigma large powder f30 brush this one i've had for a good few years unfortunately it still sheds to this day i don't know why what i tend to use this one for is to set my powder as in when I set my foundation because it's such a huge brush and it's so fluffy and it covers such a large area this is what I tend to use with my whatever powder it may be I just press it like that and then I just literally dot it all over my face and it sets my foundation it's really nice and fluffy the only like I said the downside is that it still sheds to this day but this one I've had for a good couple of years and I use on a daily basis a lot of the brushes that you're going to see are ones that you would have already seen in my makeup tutorials so you guys know that it's not a lie, they are her favourites because we've seen her actually use it loads and loads of times. So that's this brush. Another favourite of mine is this Real Techniques. Uh, this is called the Contour Brush. I don't use it for contouring at all. This one I use for multiple different reasons. I use it to set my under eye with powder. I use it to tidy up mistakes. I use it to brush off my um, translucent powder when I cut my contour along my cheekbones. I use it to tidy up areas. I use it for a variety of different things. Different things, And this I actually do use every single day. By the way, I've washed all these brushes just for this video. Trust me, it was hard doing my makeup this morning when I was like, uh, where am I? I can't use my favourite brushes because they're going to get dirty and I won't be able to use them in my video. It'll look grubby. So this one is definitely a firm favourite of mine. I use it every day. This one is one of my, probably one of my newer brushes. This is the Morphe M459. I think it's called a contour brush. I'm not too sure. All the brushes I will link below, by the way. So even if I don't remember what their exact names are, at least I can list it for you. You would have seen me using this to chisel out my contour. So once I apply my um, contour with whatever brush I use, and then I want to sharpen it, I use my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I literally drag it along. I also do it down my nose as well because it is a very sharp kind of brush. You can see like that. It's really sharp. It's very dense. 
so you can really get a really sharp line so I really love this I use this again every single day would I say use it for actual contouring I don't know I don't think I personally would because your contour would end up being too sharp so that's just something to bear in mind now my favorite brush for actual contouring is this one by Sigma it's called the large angled contour f40 brush so this one again is quite old the reason it's purple uh, just like the other one is because I got it in a set about six years ago it's lasted me a really really long time I like the fact that it's fluffy but still dense enough so whenever I use whatever contour powder it is I go like this cut it I even do the sides of my nose around my forehead again you would have seen me use it in loads and loads of videos so I really love this. This is what I use on a daily basis. I've got a small version of this as well that I take with me to the gym. This brush is the Morphe G7 brush. As you can see, it is a face brush. I tend to use this for quite a few different things. I use it to, if I'm not using that large Sigma fluffy brush that you saw, I will use this to apply a powder to my face. I use this to bronze up my face as well because it's quite a large brush and it's dense but still quite fluffy. I can use it to bronze large areas of my face. I use this as a blush brush as well sometimes, but I'm trying not to be too precise because generally my blush brushes are quite small because I like to be able to control where the powder goes. When it comes to something like this, sometimes you can't control it. So if you are kind of in a hurry and just want a quick glow sort of thing, just and you're done. This brush is also from Morphe and it's an E3 brush. This one, again, is quite dense, but it's a lot more fluffier than the one that you saw before. I use this for blush and for bronzer as well. So it's really great multi-purpose use brush. I wouldn't use something like this for foundation just because it's too kind of, it's not really made for foundation, I would say. And yeah, yeah, but I really do like this. My favorite brushes to use for blush. My first one and probably my favorite blush brush is this elf complexion brush. I bought another one of these when I was in Canada. It's quite long and fluffy but still dense enough and I don't know what it is it just picks up the product really really well and then I'm really easily able to just apply my brush so I re blush <laughs> so I really really love this to the point where I've got two of these now. Another one that I have is this 129 MAC brush. To be fair, I've had this one for years and years and years. And I've got three small ones as well, which I take to the gym. It's just perfect. It's the perfect size. It's not too big. It's not too small. For people like me who I've actually got quite a small face. I know it may not seem that way on like camera, but I actually have got a small face. And I've also got a fairly round face. So I don't, I don't tend to apply a blusher to the apples of my cheeks like a lot of people do. I tend to apply it to the backs of my cheeks. If you've got a round face and if you apply it to the apples of your cheeks you're just going to make your face look more round and that's not what you really want what you want is to make your face appear a bit slimmer so I tend to apply my brush blush generally to the backs of my cheeks just above my contour and because this is quite small and still quite fluffy I can easily fit it in there without having to worry about the blush kind of moving around and similar reason is why I have this one this is the Royal and Langnickel blush brush again it's very similar to the MAC one, a lot more affordable, but it's got that same small but fluffy but still fairly dense to be able to control that blush and where you apply it to your cheeks. So I love this one. Now my favourite brush for highlighting is this Morphe M501 Pointed Blender Brush. I don't think the purpose of it is for highlighting, but I tend to use it for highlighting. It's too big, I think, to use on the actual eye itself. Like you can see, it's quite long and tapered. But I love using it to apply my highlighter to my cheekbones, on my nose, my cupid's bow. And it's just awesome to use. When it comes to using a fan brush, sometimes I find that because it's a fan, it fans the product a lot further than it should go. It can be difficult to, con to control sometimes. This one... This one I find I'm able to control where the product goes a lot better. Fan brush, you're going like this. And I've noticed that sometimes bits of the highlighter flicks down to other parts of my face. Whereas this one, it's more controlled, it's more condensed. And that way I'm able to just apply it to my cheekbones perfectly. Now we're going to move on to the eyes. Now my favourite brushes for doing the crease area a fluffy brush the first one i have is this sigma tapered blending e40 brush i love this one this one is again a very very old 
you can see it's got that same purple packaging that I showed you from the other one. I actually got these quite a few years ago. I am a Sigma affiliate, by the way, but you know what? I'll be honest with you. I'm probably like the worst affiliate you could ever come across. I forget to promote them all the time. They're probably like, why did we even offer her this? <laughs> because she's never made any money. I've literally made zero pence from it. But I bought this along with all the other ones before I became an affiliate. And I've continued to use them. But I just wanted to put it out there in case you guys know. I'll put my affiliate links below now that I've said it to remind myself. But generally, I'm a really bad affiliate. But I do love this normally to use in the crease. But I like to use this also to apply... Uh, a nude or bone type of shadow all over my eye to set my primer to make the area nice and soft and smooth so that when I apply a crease shade it blends a lot more easily you don't get that dragging that you can get and then you get drag marks on your eyes so I love this for that my all-time favorite crease brush to the point where this I have actually got three of these is the Morphe M330 brush I've used this in so many tutorials it's long it's tapered but it's still soft it's not long and dense so it really easily picks up the product and I can just go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards in the crease and it does all the work for you I don't even have to work that hard especially because it is so 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 soft it is general genuinely a really soft brush but because it's so long and tapered it really gets into that crease really nicely I'm probably going to end up buying another one of these and Morphe brushes are generally very affordable as well and they're really good quality and another brush is this one is from Royal and Langnickel it's from their master pro collection it's called the tapered blender brush it's not as tapered as the one that I showed you, but again, it's really good quality. I love to use it in the crease to blend out um, transitional shades and that sort of thing. It didn't cost me that much money. I got mine at iMats, and I've got three of these as well, just because they are that good. I find that when it comes to crease brushes, the best thing to do is to get one which is quite long and quite soft. The longer and softer it is, the more or the less work you have to do in the crease it also disperses the product really softly and nicely which is what you want from a crease brush now i've got quite a few definition brushes to show you because once you've obviously done the, the crease work sometimes you want to kind of work in the outer v area or you want to do a little bit more blending or you want to have a more of an intense color so my favorite one out of all of these firstly is this zoeva 228 crease brush this one is a little bit more pricey it's definitely not as pricey as mac brushes but it's still a little bit more pricey but i find that this is my favorite one out of all of them it's fluffy it's not you can use it in the crease if you want to but i find that the end is a little bit more tapered so you can have a little bit more concentrated kind of shadow in the corners of the eyes so i love to use this one for that the old school mac 217 this one i've had it for so many years that it's all rubbed off this is probably one of the first brushes i ever bought that's because morphe didn't even exist at that point half of these brands didn't exist real techniques there was no such thing as real techniques so literally i have had this for like seven years this one is tried and tested i think i've got two of these this one picks up the product really nicely and you can really work into that out of the area to build up definition beautifully and it blends everything out amazingly another morphe brush is this m505 brush this one is long but it's still quite is quite fat if you can see it's not as long as tapered and tapered as the other ones but what i love about this is that i can apply let's say for example a black shade which is definitely difficult to work with a matte black shade all i have to do is poke it into the corner of my eye and just go like this and it just blends everything out amazingly for you and it spreads it out nicely as well because it is quite fat at the end it's not long and tapered it's short and fat but still quite long enough i've got two of these now these three are for a little bit more definition because even once you've blended out the outer v color you may want to let's say for example you've got a burgundy shade that if you've used one of those other brushes for but you want to go in with a black to deepen and intensify it a lot more that's where these brushes come in this one is the sigma small tapered blending e45 brush as you can see it's short and it's still quite tapered so you can have a little bit more control and work up and darken shades a lot better 
the same sort of thing for this Morphe E17 brush. I think I used it in that Huda Beauty makeup tutorial that I did to use the black for that same reason. I wanted something that would disperse a product a little bit more concentrated. So I really just kind of went in and really kind of got in there so it's beautiful to use as a crease brush as well as for example I've got like a spotlight eye on my eyes at the moment it's small enough to be able to pick up the product and work on the inside as well as the outside leaving the center of the lid for you to use something else on this one is the Makeup Geek Defined Crease Brush. This one is actually very small and tapered. It's long and it's small, but it's still tapered at the end. So this one you can definitely do a lot more with as well, whereas some of the other ones will disperse the product a lot more. This one keeps it very concentrated, but you're still able to blend in. Let's say you don't want to use a lot of product, you're just going for something quite soft. This one will, you can pick up the colour and still put like a little bit of definition in the corner and you don't go overboard with this either. Now for lid brushes. This one is the Sigma Large Shader E60 brush. What I love about this is that it's a big and it covers a large area which is what you want sometimes sometimes you don't need to worry let's say like I said again with my spotlight eye you need quite a small brush to work in the middle something like this wouldn't work the product would end up going all over the place so let's say you want a wash of color all over your lid and you don't want to have to keep going one two three, three, three you know keep having to go with it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards all I have to do is literally coat this brush in a product and then I can just dab it all over and that's it I'm done so I love that this covers such a wide area this brush is the Sigma E55 eye shading brush so this is a smaller version of that brush and it's a lot more fluffy so when you don't want a color which is very concentrated for example that shading brush there you can apply a more concentrated shade but because this one is fluffy it kind of blends out the edges at the same time while still covering a large area on your eye this brush is an old school one it's the mac 242 eye shading brush quite a lot of people have this one i like this for applying glitter on my eyes i actually used another brush very similar like this to do that center spotlight eye bit as well it again covers quite a large area but it's kind of like a mid-sized brush so you can use it for a variety of different things and then this is another classic the mac 239 eye shading brush this is to work with a lot of smaller areas on the eyes i've had this one for like when i got the 217 brush it's really really old but i absolutely love it for packing on color for working in smaller areas as well as large areas it's a really versatile brush to use now moving on to the pencil brushes this one is the sigma e 30 is kind of rubbed off again you can see again with the purple head the purple on it they all come from the same set that I got years and years ago and I've used it ever since then so this is their pencil brush I tend to use this for quite dark colors on the lower lash line and it blends everything out beautifully it does what a pencil brush is supposed to do so it's down to you whether you want to use it for your tear duct shade I personally use this one for blending out under eye colors it works beautifully for that and for my tear duct, I generally tend to use this MAC 219 pencil brush. It's no different to the other one. This one's probably a little bit more dense. I'd say the other one's a little bit more soft. So I don't need something soft on the inner eye. I just tend to just use this pretty much all the time, basically, just to dot my inner highlight on. And then this brush is the Royal and Langnickel Pro Blender, Pro Pencil Blender brush. This one is the same length as the other two, but as you can see, it's a lot more fluffy. So I tend to use this on the lower lash line to really blend things out. When I, whereas I use this one for a more concentrated amount, let's say I would put this one on first, then I would use another shade on this brush to blend it all out. It really kind of disperses the product a lot more because it's a lot more fluffy. This brush is the MAC 212 brush, and it's so small because it's uh, one that I got as part of a holiday collection. As you can see it's very thin and like narrow so what I tend to use this one is to use eyeshadow to basically stamp onto my lower lash line it gives a really concentrated amount of eyeshadow in one area you can use this for eyeliner but I don't tend to use that I normally use actual eyeliners like my 
NYC liquid liner or my L'Oreal Super Liner Perfect Slim. I don't tend to use this for eyeliner, even though it's up to you if you want to, but this is my video, so I'm just telling you what I use it for. And then I would use one of the other brushes that I just showed you to blend it all out. So sometimes you really want to have like a black, but you do it really close to the lash line, and then you can use one of the other brushes to blend it all out. And then the last brush I'm going to show you is this 227 Fluff Brush. Again, it's by MAC. And this is small because I got it as part of some holiday collection. I use this every day to highlight my brow bone. Now, some people tend to use a lot smaller brushes. Obviously, that's down to you. But I've got quite a large like eyelid and eye space. So I can go in with something which is quite large. This one is a very fluffy. So I can easily apply the product to my brow bone and it blends everything out quite nicely. And then I'll use uh, one of the transitional brushes to kind of blend between the harsh lines. But I am able to put on quite a lot of product at once by using this brush. Oh my God, this video was so long. I'm really sorry, but obviously I had to show quite a lot of brushes and... I wanted to make sure that I did this video properly for you guys. If you've got any comments or questions or anything like that, please feel free to let me know below. What else? Oh, lipstick is Too Faced Candy Cane Liquid Lipstick. It's for their Holidays Limited Edition. Love it. Other than that, I hope you guys are great. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If there's any brushes that you would like to recommend, let me know below. I may already have them. Obviously, I've still got loads of other brushes, but these are definitely the ones which are my all-time favourites. And that's it. So I hope you guys are great and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.